By defeating the brand new bosses that were added to the river raids, you can earn 5 new weapons in Valhalla that have some interesting perks. One changes the look of mobility up as well and they look kind of awesome too. So I want to go in depth on them in this video, tell you if they are any good and also take a closer look at that brand new armor set we got. Of course, if you enjoy the Valhalla content here on the channel, want to see more, then don't leave a like on the video. And let's go. There is still time to enter my current weekly Helix credit pack giveaway. We of course already know about the upcoming Helix set. So you will have a chance to get that one if you win. You can participate via the link in the pinned comments. And of course you have to be a subscriber of the channel before you enter. I will reach out to the winner very very soon. And in that Dark Knight armor video I already went over the look of this new Luke's armor set. You can get right now for free. And also how it changes. I especially love the green cloak. You of course get all the armor pieces in the two new Irish rivers, Burba and Arif, which unlock after completing the initial river raid missions. Just look for the bigger camps with a ton of enemies and loot all the big chests to get the full set. It's pretty easy, but I shared the exact locations in that previous video, which I will link to at the end of this one. And once you got the full set, you get 7, 14 or 21 extra melee damage, melee resistance, range damage and range resistance depending on the amount of enemies around you. With the maximum being 5 or more. And then you get 21 damage and resistance. And once you got that, the perks of course full. Otherwise it's 2 thirds and 1 third. And that of course shows you which buff is active. So let's see if it actually matters with only 1 third of the buff. So 7 extra melee damage. I do 31, 36 and 38 on this dummy. But with the full buff, so 21 extra melee damage. I do 34, 39, 42. So... It's a slight increase of like 3 and 4 damage. Range damage increases are always a bit more noticeable. This with 1 stack, 33, 34 and 37. And with the full armor perk, 21 range damage, I do 38, 40, 43. So it's like a 6 damage increase. And how does the resistance stack? Do you notice that? So this without any stacks from the armor, getting attacked by one enemy. And then after that, you see me surrounded by 5 enemies and getting attacked then too. So yeah, comparing the top where I do have the bonus from the armor set, I totally take way less damage compared to when just one enemy is surrounding me. So yeah, when it works, it's quite nice. It's not like amazing or anything, but the problem remains. Like you will not be surrounded by five enemies or more as often as you would like. So I would say it's an average set, totally not useless, but especially great to get for the look. And if you played through the new River Raid maps, then you've likely already killed some or maybe all of the champions. And the first time you get the River Arif, there will be a special druid waiting for you at the end of the river. And once you killed that champion, you get Luke's Spear, which is pretty interesting. Stunning an enemy gets a fire on your weapon for 10 seconds, which is more than we see on the Sepulcher X, where your weapon goes on fire after a crit, but only for 5 seconds. But yeah, it's totally way more difficult to score a stun compared to a crit and if you're using two spears which of course still the best combo in Valhalla then you will almost always kill the enemy before they get stunned so you really have to focus on stunning enemies with parries for example to benefit from the effect of the Luke's spear. And yes, if you stun an enemy with a different weapon, then both weapons will be on fire, which is nice. And it also works with the bow. So if you hit a weak point of an enemy to get them on their knees, so to get them stunned, then you get fire on your weapon for 10 seconds. But if you stun an enemy when the effect is active, it won't reset. So it's actually smarter to wait with stunning an enemy before the perk is not active anymore. But yeah, that's not really convenient at all. And also using abilities like the brand new Precision Extra doesn't work. Like if that stuns the enemy, you still do not get fire on the weapon. So sure, it's a fun playstyle to like hit the weak point, get fire on the weapon and kill enemies that way. But... They can just better pop the fire strike ability and not worry about it anymore. And also at this point, no new spear will be exciting unless it's better than Gangnir or Gay Bollock. Otherwise you can just use those two spears. So they either gotta be really good or Ubisoft should not really bother with new spears anymore. After taking out the Druid Champion for the spear, you of course make your way to Frankia to River Rhine and have to kill the champion there at the end of the map for the second free one-handed sword. 
also with the oof bird engraving just like the Egbert sword of course from the siege of paris but yes now if you did not get the season pass you will still be able to dual wield two one-handed swords if you got the one from the secret blood festival and this new oof bird sword has a 15 crit chance and 15 crit damage after a parry for five seconds which is actually quite nice as normally building crit chance means that you do not get as much crit damage and yes the fact that it's after a parry means that if you also equip two feign armor pieces you get 10 extra crit chance on that same parry and that's of course overall the thing as i said before if you want to notice more crits you really have to focus all your items on crit chance only this sword and even the two armor pieces of the faint armor set is not enough i use of course the viper bow as well and there are many other options like two Nivelheim items if you were able to get them at Reda. And then if you have more crits, having the major rune where weapons get on fire after a crit will of course be great. And of course also that you get health back from crits. And I especially found that rocking a shield in the offhand in combination with the Oofboard Sword is great. Because it doesn't only make parrying easier, but you also can have effects like health on a parry from the Bryden shield. I now covered it with the Raven shield here, but... Yeah, you can make a fun parry build in combination with the crit chance with this sword, which is kind of cool. Now, after getting both weapons and a brand new armor set, extra missions will open up, leading you to three extra bosses in the river raids. They are sadly not repeatable, which is just a shame because after killing those bosses, there's no good reason to do the river raids again. But yeah, each boss will drop their own unique weapon. And I want to start with the brand new hammer that you get from the second druid champion. But this time you find them in River Burba. This is namely the first hammer we got since the launch of the game 10 months ago. We already have more one-handed swords in the game right now than hammers. Let that sink in. Really seems that nobody at Ubisoft likes the hammers. So... The Celtic Crusher has increased X Fury damage. That is all, there's no indication of how much extra damage. But normally perks like this are actually pretty good. Like if you got two Tyrannus pieces, which were of course at Reda a couple of times, then you get extra bonus damage when completely unarmed. And yeah, the amount of bonus damage is not noted, but it's really a ton. The damage increase with this hammer is harder to test though, because the throwing X Fury ability lets you of course randomly throw weapons to nearby enemies. And by the way, this cool throw hammers now instead of axes, when using this hammer in particular. Which like a cool unique effect that makes this weapon even more unique. Like I don't think we've ever seen a weapon change up an ability. Now but in my experience you totally see a bit more damage for this ability while having the hammer equipped. But because there are so many different things that impact that damage it's hard to make a good comparison. The lower the stun bar of the enemy of course means that they have less armor. So doing the ability versus a low stun bar enemy means more damage than when you use the ability at the start of the fight. And all the footage you see here is, by the way, on the very hard difficulty with the nightmarish enemy scaling. But in short, this small damage increase just doesn't warrant the complete focus on this X Fury ability. The main reason is that there are just way better abilities that deal more damage for that same adrenaline bar, even with the increase from this hammer. And there sometimes seems to be something weird going on where actually spamming the ability decreases the damage as if like enemies build up some extra defense against it if you use it rapidly after each other like here these Frankish enemies take less damage from the ability when I use it for the third fourth and even later fifth time so yeah I cannot really recommend the hammer I do like the idea behind the perk though especially because ability damage is really bad in Valhalla so this is a way to deal more damage with an ability so I hope they do it for other abilities for future weapons but right now the hammer is kind of mad. We are seeing another twist on the ability perks with the Sir Garrett's Holy Sword, which you get by raiding River Rhine again after taking out the first champion. There will now be a second champion in the same church who gives you the sword. You get 10 extra ability damage and 10 melee damage after activating the Spinning Harpoon ability. And you, by the way, find that ability also in River Rhine. I love it. But maybe I already guessed it. 10 melee damage and 10 ability damage... 
is not noticeable at all. I do 36, 40, 44, and 46 on a dummy without the buff from the sword. And then I use the spinning harpoon ability to get the perk for 10 seconds. And I still do 36, 40, 42, even less than 44. And then I also end with 46. The extra ability damage should mean that my spinning harpoon deals more damage too. It deals 35 damage against dummies without the buff. And then with the buff, the 10 extra ability damage from the sword, I still do 35. So yes, this sword is as useless as they come. For the final new weapon, the Rolos lost Dane Axe. You need to go back to an English river, River Severin, and it killed the champion there. I really love this boss fight, by the way. And the axe turns gold after upgrading it, which I also quite liked. It gives 15 extra attack after a special attack. So after doing that, what I like to call the whirlwind, so where you spin your weapon around by, of course, holding the left tank button. You only get 15 extra attack for 3 seconds though, so that's like 1 or 2 hits if you are lucky with this weapon. I do see a jump from 46 with the first heavy attack without the buff to 50 with the 15 extra attack. So that's like 4 extra attack, but I think it's still a really bad weapon, but that's mostly because the buff only lasts 3 seconds. But yeah, they're totally getting more creative with the perks for sure, which I think is cool to see, but the underlying problems of the Valhalla stat system just hold back all these post-launch additions. Something I've been saying for a really long time now, but I hope they continue down this path and give increases to other abilities, for example, that actually do have a big impact, like that would actually change your playstyle if you were suddenly asked to use an ability that you maybe never used, but now the damage is significantly increased because of a new weapon you found. I got more exciting Valhalla content coming this week, also looking ahead at what we can expect after this River Raid update, yeah, and also after the Discovery Tour. So totally subscribe to be up to date on everything Valhalla. A like on the video would of course really help me out, and check out my previous video going over the other cosmetics added with this update. You can watch it by clicking on the screen. And for now, I will speak to you next time. Goodbye.